Unfortunately, one of these sentiments that I do hear quite often from people watching this channel is something along the lines of, wow, you guys have been doing so much and here I am, I've been watching you for like the past six months or nine months or however long and I still am like struggling on my first prototype and I feel like I haven't made any progress in all the time. I feel like I'm not a real game developer and this is a statement that saddens me because that feeling of not really being a game developer is what we call in mostly the tech industry imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is where you are part of a group or you're part of a company and you feel like you don't belong there. You feel like you've just lucked your way into it and one day everyone's gonna find out that actually you have no talents and they like hired you by mistake, they're gonna fire you or whatever. And generally you don't wanna be fired. You don't wanna just lose the company that you're at. I very much understand this because when I was working at my previous job, which was as a data center engineer, which is a very, very technical job, all of the other technical colleagues around me have literally been working at that company since before I was born. They had 25 years of experience more than me and I was suddenly just thrown in there as like a part of the team and I felt like I would never reach their point in life because like I said they had been doing it for 25 years already before I was even born. So I very much felt out of place there. I very much felt that like one day they're gonna realize that I'm stupid and then I don't know what, like they're gonna fire me or whatever. And this is very common in general tech jobs where you're a programmer or like how I was like data center engineer because something very technical where like your hard skills really matter a lot, it gets easy to get that feeling. And this is the same thing with game development. However, it's a bit different that at least for if you're an indie developer, instead of being fired, if you're like found out to be a fraud, you're going to be exposed when you release your game and it's gonna be a big flop and nobody will buy it and everyone's gonna be like, this was a shit game, who made this? You shouldn't even call yourself a developer and then your studio goes under and that was your game dev career. That's generally a bit more of the thought of like, imposter syndrome in game development. Now there are some other thoughts that you may have such as for example I don't have a degree in game development, I don't have any game like design experience and I don't really think that one day I'll ever make a great game. Am I gonna be stuck to just making shitty 2D platformers till the end of time or like until I decide to just quit game development in general or something like you've watched our videos you know that you should be making that Steam page but still you haven't done so yet and you just feel like you haven't achieved anything. You feel like, what am I doing? I'm not a real game developer. Or like I said, you see us like releasing games. We earning money, I've gone full time. And you are still stuck on choosing an engine or still stuck on like prototyping your first idea. Or you've gone through 20 different game design documents already without really knowing what you wanna make. And once again, you're gonna feel like I'm not really delivering any value. I'm not making any progress. Whereas these guys, they know what they're doing, obviously. Let me tell you, we don't. How could I ever reach their level? And all of these are great examples of imposter syndrome. And even I, to a certain degree, have imposter syndrome because I don't have a game dev degree. I don't have any like real affinity with game design. Like I wasn't like making small games back when I was like 12 years old or already, or I wasn't a good artist like since I was like started drawing. I've never drawn before. I'm not even a good programmer and still, I'm somehow here making games. It's like, of course, one day I'm probably gonna fail, right? Because I'm competing with people, especially here in Belgium, who've gone to one of the best game development schools in the world. What am I even doing here? And then like, for me, especially on top of that, I have over 19,000 people at this point who are watching my every move or looking at how am I progressing? And plenty of you guys are better game developers than me. So I also, once again, feel like I am not in a position to always give certain pieces of advice. That's why you don't see me cover certain topics as well, like marketing. I try to really limit myself there because I know I'm not as good as I should be in that regard if I want to become an authoritative figure on talking about marketing. And chances are that you also have some kind of imposter syndrome. Maybe that's why you click the title of this video because you just resonated with the fact that I don't feel like a real game developer. If that's the case, definitely you have imposter syndrome. Or if you agreed with any of the earlier statements I said just yet, you know, you don't feel like you're that successful as a game developer, probably you also have a little bit of imposter syndrome. But now, you know you have it. What do you do about it? This is the important thing. Like, how do I keep going even though I feel like I'm not a real game developer? And the first thing that you should do here is just 
accept it. Accept that, hey, look, imposter syndrome is a thing. I'm probably going to have these feelings all of my life, probably like 20 years from now, you could still be like, man, I feel like there are better people. Like look at John Carmack, look at John Romero or whatever. So accepting it now is already a big thing. Knowing that you have it and knowing that you want to work on it are already some pretty big steps in terms of dealing with imposter syndrome. But one big thing that I learned about imposter syndrome is not that it's about how much value you've been delivering. Because especially when I started my first job, the first few months I was not delivering any value. And then it's really easy to get those feelings of imposter syndrome because you don't have anything tangible at the end of the day to show that you are a real game developer. This is also one of the reasons that I say to like release that first game on Steam as fast as possible even though it's pretty bad because once you do that you've hit that milestone that you can prove to yourself like hey I can actually deliver a game. But at that point, you've already delivered some value. What do you do when you haven't reached that stage yet? What do you do when you're like just getting started, you've spent only a few months on like making your first game and there's not much to show yet? Well, what's important here then is that whilst there's not enough value, you should put in as much effort as you can at least. I could go and like be very like kumbaya here and just be like, look, okay, it's normal that you have imposter syndrome. Just accept it. You're still doing great in your own unique way. And that would be nice. And that's what would get me likes or whatever on this video. But that's not going to help you if I'm being honest. If you don't have any value that you've like delivered before, then the only thing you can do is to put in the effort. Showing that you actually care about what you're doing, even though there's nothing out there yet. Like I said, you should realize, okay, imposter syndrome is real and I'm not going to be able to deliver like actual value from day one. Don't expect that, it's not gonna happen, but at least show that you're putting in effort. I'll tell you like a little gym bro secret is that when I'm looking at people around me at the gym, I'm actually not as inspired by the people who have like very good physiques, that the people who like look like they've been training for eight years already. I'm more inspired by having those people who are there every single day where every time I walk into the gym, even though they don't look like very good, like they look like kind of fat still, despite that, they know that, look, this is going to take some time before I see the results of this and they keep showing up. They keep putting in the effort and that is going to be much more valuable in dealing with imposter syndrome in the beginning by realizing that at least I'm putting in effort and real effort. It's not just, oh, I'm clicking around in like my engine of choice or I'm making a list of the pros and cons of each engine, but I'm not actually downloading any of them and trying things out myself. If you put on real effort and you just like try to maybe participate in a few game jams or you try and actually stick to a prototype for once and continue to make it more of a real game, that's going to be massively improving how you feel about what you're doing because you're actually making progress still, even though there's nothing visible, you know that you're making progress because you can't lie to yourself. If I wanted to, I could say like, yeah, every day I work in Unity 16 hours a day and like I'm doing so much learning, but you know deep down inside whether that's true or not whether you've actually been efficiently using your time or if you could have done better. And that's going to be the number one determining factor for feeling like an imposter. If you are saying like, oh yeah, I'm learning so much, I'm making so many prototypes or whatever. But deep down inside, you know that you were just looking at pirate software shorts all day, learning about like game design or whatever. You're not going to have really done that much. And at that point, okay, it's normal that you're gonna feel like a fraud because you haven't really done much yet. This is what I mean with, I could be sitting here nice like, hey look, everyone is perfect, but you are going to be the only person who can really determine will you have imposter syndrome, yes or no. And you do that by either delivering value as fast as possible, because once you have something tangible, it's going to massively improve how you feel as a developer, or by actually putting in some effort, by actually putting in the reps, and not just pretending like you're a game developer. And you're also probably going to be scared to putting in that much effort because what if you spend like two, three weeks trying out this cool new mechanic or you're trying out to learn a new concept for programming or like you're trying out a certain art style and after you've put in all that effort, you still failed. That is not bad. That is how you learn. If you're too scared to face plant, you're going to become complacent. You're not going to really improve and once again, that little voice inside of you is going to be like, eh, you didn't really give it your all. You are kind of a fraud. So don't be scared to faceplant a few times. We've definitely had our fair share of just like running full speed into a wall and then like taking a few steps back to realize like, okay, this was not the right move. We wasted a bunch of time here. But this is how we realize that, look, we're actually putting in the effort because 
we can take a step back and we can objectively look at our failures and learn from them and move on. That is like the pinnacle of putting in effort because you've first done the thing and then second of all, you know what to do to improve upon the thing that you were doing. Where did it go wrong? That is a very important skill to have to be able to just run into a wall and learn from it. And I want to leave this topic of imposter syndrome with a quote from the movie Rushmore where the main character played by Bill Murray says, take dead aim at the rich kids and take them down. There are always going to be people better than you. That's something that you have to accept. There are going to be better developers than me. There are going to be better game designers than me. There are going to be better business developers than me. But instead of feeling inadequate, like I'm never going to reach to their level, I take dead aim at them. I look at the people that are better at me. I take dead aim at them. And I just look and focus on what do I need to do to get to their level? What effort do I need to put in? What value do I need to deliver? to get to that point and I plan for myself basically how to get out of the imposter syndrome like rabbit hole. I plan what I need to do, what I need to learn, what steps in life that I need to take, how many games I need to release or whatever to get to that level. And having that actionable plan and not just being stuck in feeling down because, oh, I could never be like them. That's how you get out of imposter syndrome. It's not just being like, hey, everyone is beautiful. Everyone has their own value. Sure, that can work. It's going to make you feel happy right now, but it's not going to be a long-term solution. Just get out there and get at it and put in the effort and just make yourself damn proud about what you've actually achieved. That's all I had to say. If you have imposter syndrome, work on it. I believe you can do it. You have some of the resources to keep learning on our YouTube channel, learn from the mistakes we've made. If you want, take dead aim at me if you feel like I'm someone who would be better than you, even though probably I'm not, and look at what do you need to do to get to my level or to get to anyone else's level. Try to not go immediately for like Todd Howard or like John Carmack, because that's kind of like extreme. Look at people who are a bit closer to you, who you have a bit more of an idea about, focus on them and just take that aim at them. That's all I really had to say. If you like content surrounding game development, then be sure to head down below and subscribe to this channel as we make these videos twice a week. So if you subscribe, then we know that you are actually interested in this kind of content and we will keep making it. That's all I really had to say. Best of luck to you and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.